Okay, so the standard deviation and variance for a sample <clears throat> takes a slightly different form. Very small, subtle difference. So, and you're going to want to know that a sample variance is going to be different. It's usually a little bit larger, larger than the population. Now, if you think about it, it has to take into account when you grab a sample, you haven't gra um, grabbed everything. And so to find a sample variance and standard deviation, you find the mean, of the sample, which we've been mathematically saying is x bar equals the sum of all the data divided by, and we're going to use little n to talk about the number in our sample. And then when we find the deviation for each entry, so we're looking at xi minus our sample mean. And then three, we square the deviation. Take this xi minus x bar and we square it for each entry. And then we add all the squares. So we sum all of the squares of our deviations. Then in our variance, which we'll denote with an s squared for a sample, a little s squared, is equal to the sum of the deviation squared divided by little n minus 1. And this minus 1 is the difference. And it's a pretty involved proof that shows why we have to do this to take into account of why a sample. Um, we have to take one away from the number of samples, but we'll get into that more um, in chapter five when we start looking at um, <clears throat> the normal distributions and its um, companion set of functions, the um, san uh, student's t sample distribution, t distributions. And so to find the sample standard deviation, which we'll note as a little s, that's the square root of s squared, or the square root of the sum of all the deviations squared over n minus 1. And so that's a sample standard deviation. Let's look at one here. Again, we're going to use the data from the book. Um, this is a study of high school football players and in this study um, players that recovered from the cushions in 14 days or less were replaced in group one those that took more than 14 days were replaced in group two the recovery time of group one was and so we have the recovery time in days for concussions in high school football players get all my data in here. So what do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 pieces of data. And we want to find the average and or the mean uh, x bar for this. So we're going to sum all of these pieces of data. Grab my calculator here. And so, let's see here. Four plus seven plus six plus seven plus nine plus five plus eight plus ten plus nine plus eight, plus seven, plus 10, 
and I've got 90. So this sums up to 90. So the sum of all my data points is 90. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12. Oops, so. And, and so we'll say x bar is equal to that. And so 90 divided by 12 is approximately, not approximately, exactly 7.5. And so of the sample that we have taken, the recovery time is 7.5 days. And so what we want to do is we want to make a table of all the x sub i's. 4, 7, 6, 7, 9, 5, 8, 10, 9, 8, 7, come down a little bit here, and 10. And if we sum this up, sum of these, the x of i is equal to 90, and so our x bar is equal to 7.5. And so our deviations, our xi minus x bar, and we get negative 3.5, again, this value minus 7.5. Let's see, minus 0 0.5. Hey, our first positive one. Whoops. So I say first positive one and I write a negative sign. What's that? Negative 2.5. That's 8. Give us 0 0.5. Now we get 2.5. 1.5. 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5, and a 2.5. And so the next column, we want to square our deviations. So we square this, we square this, and notice we should get all positive results here. Here 6.25, 0 0.25, 6.25, 1 1.5 squared is 2.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, and 6.25. And so if I sum this column, every or all the deviations. Add everything into this column, I get 39. So my variance is going to be the sum of my deviations divided by n minus 1, or 39 divided by 11, which is approximately 3.5. And the sample standard deviation is going to be the square root of 39 divided by 11, which is approximately 1.9. And so we're able to figure out how um, the sample has a standard deviation. And so one of the things we're going to look at when we move back in towards using Excel is how to do these two different calculations for um, variance and standard deviation, we're going to have to make sure that we know if we're dealing with a population or a sample. All right, and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to jump into some slides in the next video and look at what this data looks like and how that means we have to interpret standard deviations. And you're going to get something you don't get often from me, which is me looking at the slides that are your lecture notes and discussing those.